Well, the NASDAQ biotech sector is up more than 460% during the last decade. Some saying that's a bubble, others not. Former Congressman Jim Greenwood is with me now. He is the CEO of Bio. It is the world's largest trade association representing biotech companies. Congressman, so glad to see you back and happy birthday. Oh, thank I understand. You for me Many back. happy returns. Thank you. So I know that you think there is not a bubble in biotech right. precisely because these companies are going to change our health. Is that right? That's, that's not why there's not a bubble. Um, th there's a bubble, I think, in any technology when it's so new that the investors don't really understand it, and they're all trying to get on a bandwagon that they really don't fathom. Um, we're in a place now where our, our price-to-earnings ratios are, are very healthy. Uh, the, the, there's not any froth here. And in fact, the, 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 the analysts and the investors are increasingly sophisticated. So what we're seeing here is really nice advancements in the science, brand new kinds of technology, and sound investment in, in what's going to have good returns in the future. So, Congressman, I want to ask you, there's a lot of people who say that Big Pharma gave up on R&D, on research and development. It was too hard for them to justify it to public shareholders and the true growth and the true interesting work is being done in biotech companies and then perhaps later big pharma does have cash on the balance sheets and can actually buy the biotechs to innovate do you feel like that pattern makes sense no, or I, is I, wouldn't, it I wouldn't say that the big pharma gave up what I would say is that as big farmers farmers are large bureaucracies they have a huge amount of overhead and they have historically have to go, go for the blockbuster because they've got to have huge volumes of revenue Meanwhile, the small biotech companies historically for the last 15, 20 years have been able to um, be much more innovative, much more risky, much more nimble, and come up with really exciting products. And so it's a nice uh, ecosystem. Uh, the, the small companies look for sometimes the large farmers as an exit, and the large farmers are looking for these innovative biotech companies to fill their pipelines. What do you think about funding? So I was just speaking with one of my Wall Street Journal colleagues, Chris Mims, and you heard him say, yes, there is a bubble in this kind of smart thing world. But what do you think about the funding for a lot of biotech being from private sources versus, say, decades ago when a lot of it came from government? Well, government has has always played a role, primarily in basic research, but not they don't. The, the NIH is where that goes, and then it goes from there to the universities. And great science on the the understanding of how biology works has been done there. And then what happens is somebody either one of those researchers or someone outside figures out how that basic knowledge be, can be converted into something to cure or treat a disease. And so, the investment for that part has always come from the venture. Uh, area first and then eventually IPOs and, and, the, uh, and goes from there. But I hear you saying uh, progress is in fact moving oh, forward we, in this we field. Are, we are really just beginning the bio century. All right. It's great to have you with us. My Thanks for Thank, coming in. Thank you. Congressman Jim Greenwood joining me there. We have just a quick break to take. We're back momentarily with more on risk and reward.